After India has evacuated non-essential personnel from the Indian High Commission in Dhaka with the situation, the security situation getting progressively more out of hand. It's perhaps the first time that this has happened, an Indian High Commission, uh, you know, non-essential members being pulled out of the mission since the formation of Bangladesh. Family members and others from India's consulates across several cities in Bangladesh are also returning to India at a time when there are reports of a purge taking place within the country. What exactly is the situation on the ground? We've got a fabulous panel with us. In a little while, I'll be joined by Pankaj Saran, the former Deputy National Security Advisor of India. Joining us now, Saeed Badrul Hassan. He writes for the Dhaka Tribune. Uh, we've got Professor uh, Irfan Nuruddin, Professor at uh, Georgetown University with us. Um, Shavkwat Rabi, a Bangladeshi-American political columnist. And I'm also joined by Nadim Kadir, a senior journalist and author in Bangladesh. Thank you all very much for being with us. Uh, Syed Badrul Hassan, is there a purge, to the best of your knowledge, taking place within the Bangladesh Army, the Bangladesh Police and members of, uh, and within the Awami League? Those are the reports uh, that we are getting. That there, there has been a purge. There is a purge going on. No. So okay, what, what do we mean by a purge? Are we talking about people being detained? Are we pe talking about people losing their jobs? Or are we talking about worse? Well, not, not exactly. Uh, uh, people are not being detained as, as such. But they are being transferred to different uh, areas of the, um, of the military. And we have a new IGP, Inspector General of Police, who has just taken over. He has met the president. And he just made a statement. So... Uh, I, I wouldn't say um, um, that the word purge uh, here uh, signifies some uh, large-scale changes or, or radical changes. It's just a change of uh, people in different positions, people who may have been loyal to the government that is no more there. So I think they're, they're trying to bring in a new set of people uh, in order to uh, ensure that security and, and um, stability return to the country, which, you know, as you pointed out, uh, uh, that situation is not very good uh, at this point of time. And what about um, supporters of, uh, of Sheikh Hasina? I mean, are they being targeted, members of the Awami League? Are they being detained? Uh, is, there, is there, you know, sort of people avenging themselves in a sense? Uh, yes, they, they are uh, on the run. Uh, the Awami League as a political party is clearly in a, in a shambles. And uh, uh, there have been reports that uh, in the interior of the country, now we, we basically have reports in the local media in Dhaka uh, uh, focusing on, uh, on, on the urban areas, Dhaka mm -hmm. and other cities. But the, the reports that we are getting from within the country is that uh, Awami League supporters are being targeted. A good number of people have been uh, loyalists, I mean, Awami League local leaders and, and uh, uh, political activists. They, they have been killed uh, or, or wounded. Most of them are on the run. So the situation is not good. And uh, in the last couple of days, which uh, you might know, uh, in fact, yesterday, two ministers uh, of the, of the uh, former government who tried to leave the country, they were uh, apprehended at Dhaka airport and they, they, were, arrest, they, were, they were detained, sure. uh, taken into, uh, into, into, uh, under arrest by the, uh, by the military. Nadim Kadir, what's happening in terms of attacks on minorities? We hear that... Uh, Temples have been attacked. Uh, the homes of, uh, of Hindus in Bangladesh have been attacked. Uh, are these sporadic incidents or is there something larger? Thank you so much. Well, um, I, I must say that uh, today uh, the situation is much better as far as attacks on temples, and but there were reports of attacks on churches. So it, 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 it indicates it's a very planned uh, kind of um, uh, attacks going on. And, uh, uh, but thank God that it was very bad yesterday and day before, but today things are calmer in all the sectors. So uh, it did happen. But now I can say quite proudly about the students that they have spread around the country the, and the local uh, people, including, uh, you know, the imams of the mosques, they have, uh, they are protecting the temples and churches. Hmm. So, uh, that's helping because we have no police right now, you know, police are on strike. No, that's a so, crisis. Uh, that's, that's perhaps that's the a biggest crisis. immediate immediate problem. Right. Just so hold in, your thoughts for one place. moment. Uh, Rahul Anand, uh, a singer, a very well-known singer, somebody whose home was targeted and burnt down, has put out this emotional video and message. Um, if we can just play this, uh, if we can just uh, play out uh, this video for a few moments because he's got these pictures of how his house was attacked. So let's have this up full frame. Can we have that up full frame? Yeah.
All right, we'll have that, uh, that message that he's uh, got out in a little while from now, but it's devastating to see homes being targeted in Absolutely. quite this manner. Absolutely. Professor Irfan uh, Nuruddin, um, who's in charge in Bangladesh? Well, the military is in charge. Uh, for but right is now, it really? I mean, is it really is my question. I mean, it could be notionally in charge. Uh, but, you no. know, this is not a military coup that's taken place. The military no. was forced to get in. So this being the case, you know, who's really in charge? I mean, are there extremists in charge? There is the, the Jamaat in charge. Uh, is it the opposition in charge? Khalid Azia's party in charge? Or is it the army in charge? Well, I think of those options right now, uh, the evidence suggests that it is the army in charge. So I appreciate your point that in a moment of crisis and chaos, what it means to be in charge is uh, worthy of some discussion. The fact that Mohammed Yunus, the Nobel laureate, has agreed to give his name so publicly as leading the interim government, I hope is a good sign that this is going to be a, you know, some sort of grand coalition uh, to bring some uh, stability back until hopefully elections can be held. Uh, I don't think that there is any evidence suggesting that the most extreme uh, fringe elements of Bangladeshi politics are remotely in charge. And, you know, one hopes that even while they might have had their moment in the last 48 hours in, you know, sowing chaos, uh, burning houses, attacking people, that uh, very quickly they'll be pushed back to the fringe. Uh, the larger crisis is that history tells us, you know, empirical social science tells us that when governments fall in such a manner, it takes a long time to get back on track and to reconsolidate uh, democracy. And so the truth is that, you know, there might be stability returning and one prays that there is, there might be a new government that emerges, but all of that's a long way from putting Bangladesh on the track to being a stable constitutional democracy once again. The scars of such an incident um, are long lasting. And the truth is, of course, that Bangladeshi democracy was really under attack over the last decade by the Awami League and Sheikh Hasina. And so a lot of the damage that has been done will now be exacerbated. Whether it can be undone over the long run will really depend on what kind of leadership Mohamed Yunus, other sensible actors within government uh, can do. But if, there is, if this is going to be a moment of settling old scores, um, right? Uh, unfortunately, I think that, you know, we, we, we have to buckle up for many years of real instability in yeah. Bangladesh. Uh, Shafkat Rabi, um, Muhammad uh, Yunus is um, perhaps the most well-known Bangladeshi, someone with a huge international standing, a Nobel laureate, etc., etc. But does he have the political capital to bring together disparate elements within Bangladesh who aren't necessarily attracted to his economic wisdom, but seek something else? Uh, thank you. Dr. Yunus is probably the best candidate at the moment who can unify Bangladesh. Why do you say As so? you have seen already, uh, the, the fact that he has wide acceptance among the regular people and also among the student protesters who organized this downfall of Sheikh Hasina. So they demanded that Yunus be there. And internationally, Yunus has the clout. He has the reputation for being um, a moderate person. He is not an Islamist. He is not a communist. He is not a you know, outright uh, rabid capitalist. So he has all these uh, nice things that you need from a person to lead the nation right now. It would be difficult for somebody to accuse him of being like a radical. So uh, that's very good for Bangladesh, very good for uh, the, the neighbors, neighbors like India as well. That's something that's been accepted by, by different groups on the ground, by student protesters, by members of the BNP, by members of the army that is he just an advisor or is he potentially a, and the, the prime minister or the leader of the interim government? He is absolutely going to be the leader of the interim government. And based on some inside information that we got from different sources, seems like he is trying to put together a very strong advisor council. Um, and he wants to lead the nation strongly. And we all have also heard from various sources that the military general, um, General Walker, is not interested to repeat the mistakes of uh, Moinuddin Ahmed, who, who was the last uh, 2006 uh, general in a similar situation, which ended in a failure. So Walker also is not trying to do anything crazy right now. So I, I do believe that Muhammad Yunus is the right man for the right moment for Bangladesh right now. Uh, Syed Badrul Hassan, um, you know, we were talking about the police very briefly earlier on. 
the police, as I understand it, want some sort of um, an indemnity. Um, they want some sort of a form or some sort of promise that there'll be no action taken against them for what they carried out in the last X number of weeks. A, legally, that seems utterly untenable, but you can't have a country without a police force. So what's the way around that? Uh, precisely. Uh, the new IGP who has taken over, he's asked uh, these policemen to join their duties within 24 hours. Uh, and you're right. I mean, poli policemen uh, or any, any established force, uh, any is institutional force cannot exactly put forward demands. So they have to come back uh, uh, to their responsibilities. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, a lot of policemen and most policemen are afraid of, of the consequences because uh, in the last uh, one month or so, uh, the police have been uh, accused, rightly or wrongly, of uh, 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 suppressing the student, uh, student demonstrations. And the result has been horrendous. We have seen policemen killed in these, in these police stations and uh, at other places. So, but the, the, uh, the problem here is that the, the, the way things are going in Bangladesh, we haven't had a government in Bangladesh in the, in the constitutional sense for the last three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And uh, 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 one doesn't uh, really know say, uh, what is happening, who is making all these appointments, under what authority. So these things have to be settled uh, first. Right. So, uh, and and uh, in, a, in a modern era, in this, I would say, in a postmodern era, when a country is without a government for three days, that is a very difficult situation. Yeah. Uh, Professor Nuruddin, what happens to Sheikh Hasina? Fabulous question. I mean, unfortunately for her, it looks like she's got very few friends. Uh, the U.S. has canceled its visa. Uh, for her visa, she's obviously got family here. I think there's been really banking on being able to be let into the UK where the strong ties, but the UK seems hesitant to take her. And of course, that leaves us, India, uh, which has been a steadfast friend to her, both on a personal and on a geopolitical level. But India unlikely wants to provide her long-term asylum, right? Uh, both for strategic reasons, it endangers the partnership with Bangladesh going forward, but also sets an unfortunate precedent. So I think if, you know we need to have the dust settle. I suspect that she will stay in uh, India for a bit before finally getting to the UK. I think the real question you're asking, though, is whether or not what she wants to do is lead some sort of government in exile, or whether the diaspora community, which right now I'm sure is in complete shock, um, you know, begins to see the Awami League as needing to be reconstituted mm -hmm. uh, under her leadership from abroad, so that eventually they can return uh, to Bangladesh. This is what I meant in my earlier remarks, that I think the period of instability we're in right now is really dangerous for Bangladesh sure. because an interim government sounds well and good. Mohamed Yunus is an incredible individual as a scholar. He's got a great reputation. But there's a small window of time uh, in which returning to elected parliament and an elected prime minister is critical for sure. the long-term legitimacy of Bangladesh's Absolutely. institutions. Look, I'd like to thank... Done quickly, chaos. I'm just interrupting because we've got a story to play out as well. And I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us and trying to make sense of uh, a chaotic situation on the ground. But we've got the story and we've got the Deputy National Security Advisor of India, uh, Mr. Saran, the former Deputy National Security Advisor, on the India standpoint that's coming up as well. Images of violence in Bangladesh continue to come in from Dhaka and other parts of the country. With the absence of a government or law enforcement, dead bodies continue to be found. The target, Awami League functionaries and minorities, as arson, loot and targeted attacks continue. After Sheikh Hasina's ouster, Awami League functionaries are being hunted down and killed, and attacks on Hindus have gone up in Bangladesh. The acting chairman of the Bangladesh Nationalist Party, Tariq Rahman, the main opposition party to the Awami League, returned to Bangladesh today. He has appealed for peace and said it is our duty to protect all Bangladeshis, irrespective of religion and politics, from discriminatory violence and not to harass any particular community, create division or seek vengeance. But even amidst appeals, a violent mob attacked Bangladeshi singer Rahul Ananda's ancestral house in Dhaka's Dhanmundi. Rahul's musical instruments burnt and all the furniture has been looted. His family barely managed to escape the attack and survived. 
members of the Hindu community in Bangladesh have expressed concern over their future as India watches the situation with concern. घटे <laughs> In a worrying sign, the Jamati Islami Bangladesh, which aims to establish an Islamist state, opened its office in Dhaka after 13 years. What next for Bangladesh? Formation of an interim government, restoration of law and order, putting an end to the anarchy, chaos and violence is something that is considered an immediate requirement that should be done as soon as possible. But there are larger questions about the future of the country, the path the country will choose henceforward. What will happen to many Bangladeshis who have considered themselves an integral part of the country but find themselves in the minority now and have come under attack. What happens to their future? With camera person Aniruddha Tripathi at the Petropol Benapol border on the India Bangladesh international boundary in West Bengal, Saurabh Gupta, NDTV. Non essential personnel, families, children, uh, the elderly from the Indian High Commission in Dhaka have uh, been asked to go back home. They've come back home, in fact, and we're in the process apparently of doing that with our consulates as well. What does that say about the security threat that Indian nationals face in Bangladesh presently? Well, obviously, uh, it is part of the overall uncertainty in the entire country and in Dhaka. I'm not sure whether Indians are being targeted yet. Uh, Hindus are being targeted, but I don't think Indian nationals really face any threat. Of course, there is a travel advisory, which is always issued as a preemptive measure. But uh, I have yet to see any evidence of uh, specific targeting of Indians. And uh, I'm sure the interim uh, military uh, uh, chief uh, will be uh, taking all precautions to ensure this does not happen. A lot of this is more precautionary in nature. I don't think we can deduce from that that there is any targeting. But obviously, we cannot take any chances. I mean, that's clear. Whether uh, Indians inside Dhaka or in the country or, for that matter, uh, along the 4,000-kilometer-long border. The fact that the so, police are not uh, operational at all, they've stood uh, down, they've been on a strike, as it were, saying that they need some sort of amnesty from, uh, from legal action in the future... Does that not add to the overall chaos um, and again, as a result of that, potentially a greater threat to Indians, including the High Commission personnel? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, I think it's quite evident by now that uh, we are going through a very, very difficult phase of, uh, uh, if I may use the word, a breakdown of the machinery that is in charge of uh, ensuring law and order in Bangladesh. And in such a scenario, uh, everyone has to be extremely careful, uh, particularly Indians. Um, the police establishment is particularly hit uh, because of all the events of the last few weeks. Uh, there is, it appears to be a breakdown in the police establishment. They've established, a, appointed a new chief. Um, so, yes, uh, I mean, uh, I'm not quite sure whether the students have gone back fully, whether the uh, authorities have been able to re-establish order uh, on the streets. Uh, so in such a situation, uh, it is best uh, to be cautious uh, rather than to take any risks. Um, and I just hope that uh, uh, we do not make things worse. 
uh, or do not create panic uh, among the Indian community in Bangladesh. Uh, I'm sure that our embassy and consulates uh, are in touch with the Indian uh, community in Bangladesh who have been settled there for many, many years. Sure. I mean, they contribute to the economy. Mr. Saran, um, there are some reports which are indicating a rail purge taking place in Bangladesh. I'm not sure if it's violent by nature, though there have been some reports of killings. But certainly ministers in the old government, uh, the Sheikh Hasina government, have been detained already. Uh, there is a lot of action against supporters of Sheikh Hasina. Some reports have suggested that 20 party leaders in the Awami League have uh, been killed as well. A purge in the army which is taking place and also in the top leadership of the police. Um, is that a matter of huge concern? Because um, in as much as this is a movement for, uh, for change, um, it, it also implies a certain lack of stability right now. Oh, yes. I, I mean, absolutely. I mean, uh, we had all, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, looked at what could be the possible scenarios of a post-Hasina uh, uh, dispensation. Uh, and we are actually living through those moments uh, right now. And retribution and revenge uh, was clearly one of the aspects that uh, uh, had been thought about as a possible scenario. And that's exactly what we are seeing. So uh, it is very unfortunate, uh, but uh, something which uh, uh, had been gamed uh, by um, security planners uh, everywhere, including in India. So uh, this was a, a fear that we had. And uh, it appears that uh, some of it, I'm not sure about the scale, but uh, the news is coming in of uh, such uh, revenge, uh, retribution, uh, old enmities uh, playing out, uh, some atrocities, um, and so on. That is why it is critical for the army uh, to actually assert itself and uh, show that it is in control of the situation. Uh, that I think as that is the primary objective as we speak. Right. All other things will follow. But restoration of law and order is the immediate top priority. Mr. Saran, it's interesting that you mentioned that this is a scenario which even Indian planners and presumably that would include you uh, had gamed. Had you informed or had the government at some level informed um, Sheikh Hasina and, and her top leaders that this is a, a scenario that she could face? Well, not in that sense, in the sense of you, the way you put it, but clearly, uh, if you look at the history, and we have to learn lessons from the past history of Bangladesh, the history of Bangladesh has basically been one of the winner takes all. So whoever is in power, and we've had four or five different kinds of governments in the last 50 years, whoever takes power is succeeded by uh, someone whose first attempt has always been, historically speaking, to settle scores with the preceding administration. Hmm. And uh, this time, again, it seems it is no different. And this has been one of the structural problems of governing uh, Bangladesh. We only hope that with the passage of time, there is greater maturity among the institutions, that there are greater checks and balances. But this tendency to take uh, revenge and settle political scores uh, with the preceding administration has in fact been a fairly steady and a constant hallmark and which is what explains the turbulence in the Bangladeshi political history of any changes in government, any transfer of power, rarely has it been peaceful and orderly. This time around it is worse than before but it is not as if we have not seen uh, this happening in the past. In fact, uh, in the past I would say uh, we have seen much worse, if uh, you can argue, in terms of assassinations, coups, yes. counter-coups. Uh, so um, this, unfortunately, is, and this is why we say that, you know, what we should try and do and everyone should try and do is to help um, countries build up their institutions so that they are resilient and they uh, show maturity.